Hello everyone, this is Foxcode here, and today I'm going to be showing you or introducing you to the basic map editor in StarCraft 2. Now, this is for Heart of the Swarm, and I believe it's available for Wings of Liberty as well, but no one plays on that anymore, so it's kind of irrelevant. The first thing you want to do is navigate to where you installed StarCraft 2, and in my case, that's just C StarCraft 2. It's the only game I've got on the solid state drive, because of course, StarCraft's awesome. And you just click on StarCraft 2 Editor.exe. And once you do that, some windows will pop up, but eventually you'll get to this screen. Now, this screen is kind of a map, and notice I'm, moves, uh, I'm using the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And notice if I hold the middle mouse button down, if your mouse supports this, you can drag. So that's just some basic camera movement. We can drag the map around. Really cool. Zoom out. Zoom in. Zoom out. Zoom in. And I'm just going to show you the very basics of how to create a 1v1 ladder map. So, first of all, let's have a look at the map we've got. We've got these lines. They might not be there on yours, but you can choose which lines you want by... Ooh, I can't even remember. Where is it gone? I know this. I know this. It's in view. It's in view. Okay, so we've got show background. We've got show grid. We don't want a grid. Show placement grid, if you want to show where you can actually place stuff. See, this red is outside of the map area. The green is inside. Although, personally, I recommend you put everything inside that yellow line, and I'll show you how to get that. So, we go to view, show placement grid, let's turn that off. That's useful for when you make wall-offs and things. And we just go to show terrain, show bounds. That one is useful. So, that's the one we want. Now, you may notice a lot of maps in StarCraft are symmetrical. So, we have to turn on some symmetry thing. But first, you notice we loaded the editor. We didn't choose a size of map. We didn't choose a style or anything like that. So, we're going to go to file, new. Um, then choose the type of map you want. We just want a melee map. We're just going to make a simple 1v1 map. Next, Heart of the Swarm we will go with. Preparing document. Um, let's go for space platform. I want my cool space platform. Height, I actually like 160 by 160. I think 128 is a bit too small, but um, you can decide yourselves. And we're just going to click OK. Oh, we have to choose our base texture. I'm going to choose large tiles, actually. Let's plates. Let's see what that looks like. Whoa! So now we've got our map, kind of a bit crazy, all plates. And we need to set up the symmetry first, so we're going to go to map, map symmetry. And we're just going to do a simple, like the top left of the map's reflected in the bottom right. But there's many types you can do, so we want symmetry type, uh, rotational. And yeah, that'll do. We just want it like that. Very nice. And make sure the bounds are set on playable. If you set it on full, you'll end up problems. Just trust me, always set the bounds on playable. So we set that as OK, and we see we've got a nice yellow line going down, and it should be the same distance on both sides there. Yes, that is great. So now, we want to create a little bit of terrain. So let me introduce you to these buttons, and you need to remember these. These are the important ones. Terrain is here. Units is there. Doodads is there. That's just kind of little generic things you can chug around the map for more detail. Points, and we will be using this primarily for actually creating the spawn locations. We then have regions, cameras, and pathing. And pathing is used to make areas where units can't go. And I think you can do no-fly zones in there as well. So, But for now, let's just set up a really simple map. Very, very basic. So in the terrain tool, we're going to click raise cliff. We can select the size of this, and we can select the shape. Now this is important, you'll know on a lot of StarCraft maps there are ramps going from the high ground to the low ground. Well, if you look carefully you'll notice those ramps are always diagonal. They are never straight up vertical or horizontal on the map. And I think the reason for that is, is it makes it very hard to wall them off with buildings. I messed around with that on the first map I made, and I had problems. So here you'll see I'm just creating a nice bit of hill. It's ooh, Notice it's inside the yellow line. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is click on this tool. This is the texture tool. And I'm just going to change the texture. And I'm just going to click fill. So I've selected my texture fill. Ooh, um, not sure I like that. Let's try something else. Uh, maybe. No, I don't, it doesn't really make sense for a space platform to have rocks. So, so just play around. Just see what you like the look of. I don't like that. I do like that. I think I'm going to leave it like that. Although I will try what the first one is. Oh, I like that as well. Choices, choices. So really, you just want to experiment. Oh, I think I'm going to go with... No, I want more contrast. I think this has more contrast with the background. So we'll go with this. And notice if we zoom out, 
because of our symmetry, we have the same island location on the other side. So we are making both sides of the map at once. Now, I'm not going to make a full map here because it takes too long. I will show you it, though, and I'll show you how to specify how many players and then how to publish it to Battle.net so people can use your map. Now, remember what I was saying about diagonal ramps? Well, we're about to do that, so I'm just going to go to the smooth tool and trying to get a diagonal area. I'm also going to demonstrate this. Right, so if I select the ramp tool here, um, let's select the square shape ramp. If I just do this, we get a vertical ramp, but it actually makes it really awkward. Ah, damn glitches. The editor's got a weird glitch where it zooms to one side. To get rid of that, just left click on the mini map. I think it just doesn't like using the mouse wheel. Unless, I wonder if it's that. Whoa. Anyway, we have a ramp, but that's a vertical ramp, and we don't want vertical ramps because they're very hard to wall off. So instead, choose the diamond tool. Choose about size 5. I think that should give you the right size. Whoops. I'm on the wrong tool. That should give you the right size ramp for a main base, and just hold the mouse button down until it plays happy. It's not playing happy because I just took a chunk out of the cliff, so we need to rebuild that. There we go. Let's try now. Woo! There we go. It's a bit too big, so Control z Ah, there we go. And that's about the size of a ramp you'd have from a main base, so that's cool. Now we need a main base, though. And we've got the platform, the build area, but we need to know where to place the minerals. So to do this, we're going to go to the units tool. We're going to type in command center, or just command, and we're just going to place it in an okay position. Let's place it there. Then we're going to type in this box minerals, roughly. And we just select normal mineral fields. Now, in a typical ladder map, you have eight mineral fields. Two of them are very close, the rest are slightly further away. So, we're just going to place it in an arc. Notice it goes red if I apply it, try and place it too close to the CC. It's too close. So, let's have a one. And the key to this is try and spread them out. If you put them all bunched up, they won't arc. So, one, two. Notice I'm leaving a big gap. Three, four. Five. It looks deceptively far away, but it's actually okay. Six. Seven. Eight. So that looks a bit squarish. You can play around with them, get them right. But this will do for our test map. Then just type in Vespine to get Vespine Geyser. And we'll put two... Let's have a look. Is that okay? Yeah, okay. Now, there are some balance considerations you need to make. For example, in this base, you might worry about, oh, well, if you're against Reapers, Reapers are going to jump up straight into the natural which wouldn't be brilliant, and they could easily take out your gas, so you've got to think. And also, there's a lot of airspace behind this base, so you've got to think about things like this. Ah, sorry, the map's jumping around. Now, if we just zoom over here, we'll see we have an exact replica on this side, apart from... Oh, did I not reapply the texture? No, sorry. You should do the texturing last after you've got the shape of everything right, otherwise you end up having to keep reapplying it. There we go. And now I'm going to take the texture off fill... I'm going to put it to add texture, but low increment, so it'll only put a little bit on. Size, quite small. I'm just kind of, like, you see there? Just kind of blending it a little bit. And we might have a different colored natural down here, but anyway, you'd make the natural exactly the same way as the main base. Place a base down, and once you've done that, you can press escape to deselect everything. Make sure you're on units. Click on the base, and then delete it. And it should delete the symmetry version. Yes, it does. Excellent. So, now we go to our points tool. And we select start location. And we place it. Notice if we place it here, we don't get anything. We just get a start location. If we place it... Oh, damn it. Control Z is what I wanted. If we place it further back, the base appears. So, that means we're far enough away from the mineral patches. You can't place it too close. And also notice... We get an automatic start location over here. Start location 2. Brilliant. Um, actually, this text is annoying me. <laughs> um, it doesn't matter, though. So, we've covered ramps very briefly. We covered how to place gas geysers, minerals, and your starting location. That's really the basics. That's all you need to know for the basics. And we've got our little start location here. Nice and pretty. And the next thing we need to do is go to map. Ba I think it's... Is it player properties or battle net info? I think it's player properties. We have to select player 2 and change it to user. Ignore the neutral one. Just leave it alone. Just trust me. So that's all good. And then we do need to go, actually, I think, to Battle.net info. No, I'm wrong. Where is it? Is it map info? Map info, yeah. You need to give it a unique name. Uh, just suggest a number of players. And then a unique description. 
Once you've done all that, you would save your changes. So we'll click save and we'll just save it as temp. And then you would publish it. Now, right now, I'm going to cut to a map I made recently, which is available to play for anyone who wants to know on North America and Europe. And I'll show that in a minute. Here we go. So this is a map I made on the day I learnt the ed editor, which was literally two days ago. Um, it's got a nice defendable third, kind of in the old Antigua shipyard style. Easy fourth, and there's six bases per player, so you can see... Oh, I hate that bug. You can see the symmetry. The map is perfectly symmetrical. It's the same on both sides. And you can just play around, make whatever map you want. So, once you've made the map, you've set up the information, you've set the number of players, you've got both your start locations, you've got loads of expansions and some cool stuff. All you do is file, publish. And then you select um, what regions you wish to publish to. You would click log in. And, alright, I can do this. Actually, it won't do any harm. In fact, yes, I'll publish it to Korea because it's not published on Korea. I'm not sure if you have to log into the same region. I think you might actually have to. So, let's log into Korea and Taiwan. Password. Do, 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 do. Excellent. So we are logged in as Foxcode. We then click next. And then it might give us warnings. Locked, unlocked mode may be chosen. Okay, let me give you a quick description of what these do. So you have to have a unique description. You have to have a unique map name. And once you've got all that set up, you have to choose something in here. So this is a major revision. This is because it's the first time we're publishing it on this server. And this just changes the version number. So major, major it'll start as 1.0. If I published it again after this, it would go to 2.0 if I left it on major. If I left it on minor, it would go to 1.1. So it's just for things like that. Um, release private or public. Public means anyone can play on it, basically. And I prefer that. I mean, why make a map that no one can play on? It doesn't really make much sense to me. Uh, we can choose the name. And locked or unlocked, this is kind of an important one. If you unlock it, other people can edit it and then upload it and publish it. So, to be honest, I normally have locked. I don't want people messing around with what I'm doing, although I've not figured out exactly the restrictions on it yet. So, I would choose a locked. Um, yes, but you have to make sure you've got your local version saved, which I do. Public release major, so that's all good. And then we click next, and it should upload it to Battle.net. Upload, upload, okay. Yes, attention, blah, blah, blah. Continue publishing. 60%. 60%. 99%. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Oh, 100%. And there's usually a little sound effect. There we go. There's a little sound effect. Cool. So we can just close that. And now, if we logged into Korea in StarCraft, we should be able to play this map. Um, I'll just give you a quick, brief note of some of the features these buildings for example these are in the doodads tool so you just go to doodads um pick whatever it is you want Ooh, that's a cool thing and you just place them around the map i um don't want that there though so i'm just going to control z that so that's how you get those that red stuff you see that red region that is to stop people um going there basically it's to stop uh warp prisms dropping units on siege tanks on there that would be terribly horrific so, oh, we just go to this tool, painted pathing, add pathing, and then select what you want. You've got no pathing, ground, no building, no burrowing. I usually use no pathing, so I just paint that, and that's what's up there. So that would stop people landing. It wouldn't stop people flying over it, and I've not fully figured out how to do that. One way I know is with the no-fly zones. You can just paste them anywhere you want. And again, with all these things, they are symmetrical. It would place them on the opposite side of the map for you. And the no-fly zone, it really is a small radius. It'll just push units away from it. They get close. And that's why I've got a ring of them around. You can change the properties of them. You just select them in this window here. Double-click. And you can change the soft radius, the hard radius. And I think you can actually link them as something, but I've not figured that out yet. Anyway, that's just my quick little guide, very brief intro if you've never used a map editing tool before. It basically is just paint the terrain, just choose your textures, paint the terrain on it. Very simple. Oh, why does it keep doing that? I hate that bug. If anyone knows why the map suddenly just jumps to the bottom right, please let me know. It's annoying the living crap out of me. So any... Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work this out. What What is it doing? 
I don't know. Anyway, guys, hopefully that's been useful to you. I couldn't really find many tutorials on this, to be honest, when I looked on the internet. It seems like the tool has been updated a lot over the course of StarCraft, which you'd expect better tools over time. Every time I don't look, it does it. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you like this vid, and see you next time. Bye.